Hey everybody, Heather Coleman here, and I'm really excited for you to join me for my Kundalini Yoga teacher training final assignment. What I thought would be good to share here and kind of go through here are some of the aspects of Kundalini Yoga that are considered to be important for any practice, whether it's short, medium, or long. Um, and so I've included those, and I've also included some of the bits of kundalini yoga that I have been using on a daily basis myself and also what I've been sprinkling into some of my classes with my students. So um, I've included some of my favorite bits in here. So, so excited for you to join me. Let's get started. So welcome to this kundalini yoga practice. Let's inhale, sat, exhale, nam. Sat, nam. I almost forgot. Socks off. Sat, nam. Sat, nam. Setting an intention for protection right now. I call on Archangels Gabriel, Michael, Haniel, and Zadkiel to assist with our higher selves in creating protection to our front, back, left, right, top, bottom. So with the benefit of our angels, guides, higher selves, protection to the front, back, left, right, top, bottom. Let's breathe in. Exhale, protection and peace to our front, back, left, right, Tap, bottom. And I really like to alternate OM, OM, and OM chants, ONG. So I invite you to join me. Let's breathe in. OM. Next is OM, ONG. Let's breathe in. Oh, big breath in. Ah, next one's oh, breathe in. Oh, and one more each. Oh. Breathe in. Ah. Finishing off with an ohm chant as we brighten up our shields. Let's breathe in. Oh. The difference there, and the reason I like to alternate those chants is that the ohm chant opens up our aura, opens up our chakras, and that OM chant tends to seal off and brighten our shields. So I like to do both, right? We are opening up to bringing in what is best for our highest good. We're also sealing off our aura, so we don't take in anything that is lower vibration. We don't want to accidentally take on anyone else's energy. So with that knowledge, we're going to go into three minutes breath of fire, and I'm going to set timer on my phone here so that we... Uh, are accurate and so we are going to be holding our arms at 60 degrees victorious arms is what I like to call it so let's sit up nice and tall <coughs> 60 degree arms ego eradicating mudra with the fingers turned in thumbs up breath of fire breathe in and out through the nose breathing in through the nose and out I hope that music is coming through very clearly. That's Sat Nam because as we inhale, Sat, exhale, Nam, Sat, Nam. Deep breath in, deep breath out. If your arms start to fall down a bit, we want to use a push of joy to bring the arms back up to straight. With that being said, if we need a break at all, we can take it and just get right back up into those victorious arms. Sat, Nam. Inhale, sat. Exhale, numb. Inhaling through the nose. 
exhaling through the nose. Eyes are closed, in fact, gazing up at our third eye because what this is known to help us do is bring cerebrospinal fluid up, up, up to infuse our brain and our pineal gland with energy, high vibration, life-giving energy. This helps clean out our system, purify, help our glands to work better, help our hormones to, to flow better. Sat Nam, Sat Nam, sitting up tall, long arms. We're almost halfway through, almost a minute and a half here. You've got this, we've got this. victorious breath, breath of fire. You might be noticing as I'm noticing that kundalini energy, kundalini energy rising from the base of your spine. Sometimes it feels like a heat. Sometimes it feels like water. Sometimes it feels like both. Inhale, sat. Exhale, nam. Good. We're almost two minutes here. Look how time flies when you're having fun. Really lengthening through those arms, lengthening the spine, sitting up tall out of the sits bones. If you need to wiggle a bit, <clears throat> sometimes I have to do this a bit. Um, my understanding is that is okay, right? Because Kundalini will give us that energy. One thing I've noticed in my practice, sometimes I'll feel the Kundalini shake happening at times like this. Like I just need to shake a bit. And that was also something that was taught. So if that happens to you, it's normal. It's like when you do a bar workout and you get the tremor or the shake. It's amazing. It's energy. It's your muscles waking up. It's you releasing tension mentally and physically. So inhale, sat. Exhale, nam. Let's turn up the energy on that pranayama, that breath. Eyes shut. Gazing up with the third eye. We are so close. Opening up our crown chakra. Sitting up tall. We've only got 10 seconds. Inhale, sat. Exhale, Nam. Beautiful. Five seconds to go. Amazing. Inhale, connect your thumbs. Hold your breath. Pull up your root lock, which means you squeeze the muscles you would use to go pee. Squeeze the muscles you would use to stop your poop. We're holding the breath. You've got navel to spine. Root lock, flying up lock for three, two, one. Now we get to rest. And one thing that I like to do during the rest is to gently and slowly squeeze the shoulders together and release. Now, it's often suggested that we have our pointer finger to our thumb when we do that. So squeezing and releasing the shoulders, squeezing and releasing the shoulders. We've got 40 seconds left on our break here. Um, or you can just sit quietly. But I like to do this because I like to do a lot of chest opening, which is also going to come up more in today's practice so just feeling so energized from that breath of fire wow it's really powerful in just a few seconds here we're going to be moving on to some cat cow <clears throat> and i'm going to give two options for this for those of you at home that might be like "Woo, i want to try this and what's best so generally this is suggested that we do this on our knees but if you have any problems at all with your knees or being on your knees, I'm going to show you how you can do this. And this is sometimes done as well. So this option that I'm showing you right here is fantastic if you cannot be on your hands and knees. I'm going to be on my hands and knees today because it's so energizing. In fact, it's 7 in the morning and this is such a good time to practice yoga. I see why this is recommended. So we're going to do two minutes of cat cow. Inhaling to cow, arching the spine, lifting the chin. Exhale, rounding into the Inhale, exhale. And you're moving at your own pace, right? Could be slow, could be fast. I cannot believe how much energy I have right now. So while we're doing this, I'm just going to share my son who is like so motivated, such a, a high energy driven, proactive person was up at 5.30 this morning. I don't usually get up till 6.30, but he did wake me up because he wanted to go on early morning bike ride. He sent me beautiful pictures. Well, since I was up, I thought, you know what? How can I use this time? Inhale, sat, exhale, numb. And you know what? I have so much energy, so much energy. You can always increase or decrease the speed with this. We are doing great. We are almost one minute into this. Remember, if you can be on hands and knees, wonderful. Another option for people who have sensitive knees is to place um, a towel 
or a mat under your knees to cushion. Sometimes that works. Inhale, sat. Exhale, numb. Cat cow, we're 45 seconds left here. Sometimes I like to pause briefly at certain points where I really feel like maybe my muscles need that release. This is so good for us. We are moving energy. We are clearing blocks, not just physical, right? Not just mental. I mean, I should say not just muscle tension, but we are clearing mental blocks. You know, we hold old emotional habits right in our muscles, right in our cells. So what are you letting go of past traumas right now? What are you letting go from childhood? That's one thing this is designed to help us do. So amazing. Congratulate yourself for having the courage to show up here. Because it's not easy, but it's so worth it, right? Amazing, amazing. So next, I want to um, introduce a mantra that I learned in my Kundalini yoga teacher training. And very cool thing is that we would always do this at Unitarian Universal Universalist Church at the beginning of Family Chapel. So how about that? Now, this mantra, what it actually means is finite, infinite, death, rebirth. And yoga brings us through that process. How cool is that? We get to renew ourselves and be reborn every time we practice yoga. Woohoo! Okay, so it's a simple mantra. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Finite, infinite, death, rebirth. Finite, infinite, death, rebirth. Sa, ta, na, ma. So much energy. I don't know if you can feel. I can feel energy rising just from doing that. And I'm going to go through a challenging four-part vinyasa flow. I'm not going to explain this. I'm just going to show it to you. And I'm, in, I'm going to say it both with that mantra and with what the poses are. And you might want to watch this. You can always modify if you need to. But we begin in down. Oh, uh-oh. We got to restart our kundalini music before we do that. There we go. So we begin in down dog. Sa. Ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. I'm gonna do it one more time. Sa, ta, na, ma. Yes, child's pose, woo. It's high energy. So what that was, was we went from down dog to high plank to chaturanga, low plank, up dog, down dog, without ever letting our knees touch the mat. The energy is so high with that. If you did that with me, great job. I'm gonna flow through it one more time and I'm gonna break it down if you're like, oh, this is brand new and I wanna learn this. So we find out down dog, but also before we do this, I just wanna say, if you're kind of like new to this or you're building up, if your knees touch the mat, no big deal. The goal though is to get to where the only things touching the mat would be our hands and our feet. So anyway, down dog to high plank, belly stitched in root lock, squeezing those Kegel muscles. Now we're lowering halfway, belly in, up dog without touching the mat with our knees. But if we need to a little bit, hey, we're human. And then down dog. So breathe in, exhale high plank, Inhale, low plank, and exhale, up dog. I mix that up, yeah, so we'll just do it now. So we're in down dog, let's, let's, see, let's exhale, inhale, there we go. No, no, let's pedal out the legs. See, sometimes the brain gets scrambled. So pedaling out the legs. Satnam, satnam. So let's inhale to plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. Let's pedal out the legs. Slowly lower the knees. And now we get to rest. Woo, it's intense. 
But notice how the Kundalini Yoga, the way that it gets your energy up so high that you really can, you can power through those moves and it's amazing how light you'll feel. It's one reason I love Kundalini Yoga. So I'm gonna give you a twist here. We're gonna sit comfortable, elbows and cactus arms, squeeze your shoulder blades together, inhale, exhale. Great for mobility. Just 10 more seconds. Oh, don't you feel so energized? <laughs> um, change the order a little bit of what I had written here, but just you know, what feels right. I want to give you a spinal, I believe it's called spinal set. Um, what we do is we keep our chin and our neck level, so it's different from cat cow. This would be cat cow right here. This is just part of spinal set, right? So it's strong. Satnam. Satnam. So good if you have any lower back tension, which I'm prone to sometimes. So good for that. Activates that deep transverse abdominis. Helps to release that quadratus lumborum back there. Mm-hmm. Yep. As a corrective exercise specialist. <laughs> this is why I'm so crazy about kundalini yoga. Shoulders back. Chest proud. Chin level. We're feeling good. 30 seconds. It's okay to do this slower. Amazing, 20 seconds to go here. I'm gonna do a couple more Kriyas that I particularly love and think are very helpful, especially where we're going to order them. But for now, inhale, side. Exhale, Nam. Keeping our shoulders back. Chin tucked, neck long, five seconds. Beautiful. For anger eradicating Kriya, we are bringing our thumb at the base of each of the other fingers. I happen to love this one. Adults occasionally need a temper tantrum too. We've got our strong fists cutting through the upper part of our aura. We actually breathe through our mouth for this one. And what we really want to do, you can either do one of two ways with this. For some of you, things that anger or trigger you might just come into your mind. You might not have to call them in. This might just help to pull up your triggers. People that you have a difficult time with could be friends, hopefully not friends, family members, coworkers. Oh, breath. And if none come up, let yourself think about things that trigger anger you. We're going to cut through that. Uh, one thing I personally noticed when I started doing this was my anger ramped up on a daily basis. Um, I think it's because it had to be pulled up to be processed. It calmed down after a while. And I just wanted to share that. I've been sharing that because it's often said that Kundalini Yoga, that many people tend to have the most resistance to Kundalini Yoga. Well, surprise, there's no surprise why. <laughs> so... Anger eradicating Kriya. 15 seconds to go. You can do this longer, but today we're just doing it for a bit. And then I've added something to this that we're going to do in just a moment, but we're really sitting up tall. I call this sadness eradicating movement. This wasn't in our training, but it's really effective. What we're going to do is connect our water element, which is our emotions. Um, if you think of the movies Inside Out, sadness was blue, like water. So connect your um, little finger and you're just gonna slice through the sides. You could go fast, slow. If you feel like you need to slice through different parts, go ahead, but generally, if you picture a box, you're slicing toward the front two corners of your box, generally speaking, slicing through sadness. I personally find for myself and a lot of my clients, this is a nice one right after anger. And if you think about what we're dealing with in today's world, we hear a lot about anxiety and depression. 
anger and anxiety are pretty linked. Not for everybody, but for a lot of people. But, you know, again, it just makes sense that we could work on anger followed by sadness right away. Anxiety, depression. <laughs> Pull it up and get rid of it, right? That's, yoga can really help you do that. But I always say in conjunction with the treatments. Diagnosis if you need it, right? If you need meds, good, good, then do it. Um, therapy, right? So I'm not saying that this will replace all that, but if you do your Kriyas with your treatment, both can enhance each other. So let's come to a stop. Let's connect the earth element finger. That's our ring finger to the thumb. Let all other fingers, including the thumb, touch the mat. Let's grow our roots deep after all of the tough energy we just pulled up. Let's do a few pelvic tilts here. Tilt your pelvis under. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale, tilt. Inhale, exhale, keep your chin set. Inhale, exhale, I want you to keep those roots strong. Beautiful. Doesn't this feel amazing? One thing that happens for, happens for me and a lot of my clients feel lighter I do like I almost feel like I could float up off of the floor right now isn't that wild even though we're growing our roots how about that it's amazing isn't it awesome let's come to a stop take a deep breath shrug exhale on shrug and for one of my last um, favorites here I love this for upper back spinal mobility in fact I've been using this with my personal training clients where I work at the Y we're bringing our shoulder blades as if to touch in front of our body and then behind. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Sat. Nam. Inhale, sat. Exhale, nam. Or actually, reverse to exhale, nam. Inhale, sat. Exhale, nam. Sat. Nam. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, sa, na, sa, na, sa, na, sa, na, sa, na. If you have tight upper back, neck, and shoulders, this is such a good one because this helps to loosen up connective tissue as well as muscles, which again is why this is one of my favorites. And it can be done this way too. Like notice a little less movement with the hands, but we're really squeezing those shoulder blades together. Breathing through the, the nose. Beautiful, let's come to a stop and take a big breath in and out through the nose. Another big inhale. Exhale. And we'll start winding our practice down here with three ohm and ohm chants. So a total of six, we're gonna alternate. Let's breathe in. Start with OM. Ah. Oh. Breathe in. Oh. Next is Om. Ah. Breathe in. Oh. Breathe in. Um, one more time with Om, breathe in. Om, sealing off our practice here. I want to thank you for joining me. Um, I just feel like I have so much more fun when I, when there's like-minded people practicing with me. So thank you so much. Let's. Bring our hands together at heart center. Let's do one more root lock. Let's actually, let's inhale, pull up your root lock, hold your breath, hold your breath. 
you're squeezing your kegel muscles your your pelvic floor muscles your navel is in for three two one from the divinely guided being in me to the divinely guided being in you namaste satnam thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this as much as i did